Hi everyone, welcome back to the Coding Game channel. Today we're gonna discover the Coding Game Spring Challenge 2022, which is a programming contest that will take place from April 21st to May 2nd. On each edition, there's around 10,000 players of all levels, and the goal is to code an AI to play a specific game that's provided. Once your AI is ready, you can send it to the arena and make it fight against AIs of other players. To keep the competition interesting and balanced, there's a system of leagues and once your AI has won enough battles in a given league, you are automatically promoted to the next one. All challenges on coding game are made for beginners, but of course we try to give them a lot of depth so that the more experienced players can have fun too in advanced leagues and that's what we like to call easy to play, hard to master. Today I'm going to try to beat the first few leagues. The devs have been kind enough to give me an early access to the challenge. So you'll see that I'm the only player in the arena, but everything else will be working exactly as the real challenge. Let's get started and discover the Spring Challenge 2022. We are here on the main screen of the Spring Challenge on Coding Game. On the top left, we will have the viewer where we can watch the battles live as they go. Here we have the rules that I will discover in a minute. That's actually my first time uh, discovering the challenge, so it's very exciting. Here on the top left, we have the code that we will have to edit. This is our AI. So for now, it's been pre-filled already in Python, since I'm using Python, but you can use any language and you will have the the default code that's provided in any language. And here on the bottom right, I can choose who is playing in my own testing arena and I can play the code and send it in the arena. Our goal in this challenge is to defend against spiders. So here you can see we have spiders trying to reach our base. Our base is in the top left corner. The enemy is in the bottom right. Well, for now we're not doing anything because all our AI is doing is print uh, weight. You can see it right here and it's uh, not doing any actions. So we lose that. You can see boss one beat us. Our goal is going to be to do defend a bit better. You you can also see um, our players are attacking, so our three units, they are attacking automatically as soon as uh, they come close to a spider. So our main goal will be to protect and outlive the opponent. So here we are in the Wood 2 League, so this is the first league. Um, mainly for beginners and to get out of the league we will have to get a rating better than the boss in the wood 2 arena here the rules are pretty simple we have three heroes that we can control in this league we can only move the units or wait so this is pretty simple uh, but we will have to position the units as best as we can to defend against the spiders that are coming towards us the game is turn based. In each turn we have to specify an action for every single one of our three heroes. The hero can either wait or move towards uh, some position on the grid and the units will move by a maximum of 800 distance units. After we have moved our heroes, any spiders that is within 800 units of any hero will take damage. Monsters uh, play in between turns and they will move by 400 units. So our uh, heroes move twice as fast as spiders. But of course there will be many, many spiders and they will take more than one hit to die. The spiders will spawn randomly at the edges of the map and move in a straight line. Some of them will spawn and just draw a straight line through the map and go away. And some others will come close to our base and as soon as a spider is closer than 5000 units of any player's base they will move directly towards that base and of course if a spider has come too close to a base less than 300 units it will deal one point of damage and each base has three lives so the goal is to repel the spiders for as long as possible to take as little damage as possible and well let the opponent die first in the next part of the statement we will have definitions of the input that's provided and the format of the output that we have to print so that we can interact with the game engine. Interaction is very simple. We read the data 
data through the standard input. So for example, using input in Python or C in in C++. And uh, we output using the standard output, so print or C out, for example. The initialization, we will have one line that's provided only on the first turn, which is the position of our base. Since it will not change, well, the game doesn't have to provide it at every turn, but the rest of the information is more dynamic. So for both players, we will have base health, which is the number of health points of the base and the mana. Mana is used to cast spells. Uh, it will not be used in the first league, but after we will unlock some more uh, actions to do. And on the rest of the lines in the input, we will have data that describes all the units that are visible. So well, we have their ID, their type, which is either a spider, one of our heroes or one of the opponent's heroes. We have the position, of course. Then we have two variables that are not used yet in the wood league but uh, they are still provided so we don't have to modify too much code when we get to the next league then we have data that only applies to spiders so their health their direction as well as a form of a vector the last two variables that are provided are pre-computed by the game so it's doing a nice thing for us it tells us whether um, that monster is less than 5000 units away from a base and uh, it will also tell us uh, given the current trajectory whether or not it's dangerous for any of the players so whether or not it will reach that radius of 5000 units that will make it attack the base. So first let's watch a game with uh, the default code. So as you can see, my units are still not moving. Uh, I'm still printing weights for every of my heroes. So you can see some of the spiders, they will just leave the screen and never come back. But some of them, they are reaching the radius and they will attack automatically my base as you can see here. The units are spawning exactly symmetrically so it's not unfair for any of the players they will play with uh, exact symmetry. And well, <laughs> I, I lost again. So let's get started with the code. So what I want to do is take all the visible spiders and rank them using some kind of threat measurement. So for example, if a spider is very close to our base, well, I will want to allocate my heroes to it very quickly so they can defend. One thing I want to take into account would be the distance between the spider and my base. One other thing would be whether or not it's a threat, so that's uh, provided in the input. So even if it's very far away, maybe we want to eliminate it quickly before it can reach closer to the base. And well, the last thing I would uh, need is uh, whether or not it's targeting a base, so whether or not it's very close. Once every uh, spider has its uh, threat level calculated, I think I want to allocate to the most threatening spider, the closest hero that I have. Then for the second spider, um, the closest remaining hero that I have, so the one that's not been allocated to spider one. And for the third spider, I'll allocate by default the third hero that's available. First one thing we have to do is store the data because here you can see it's parsed. So the health and mana of my team and the other team, it's read inside a variable, but it's never stored. So here, I want to do maybe, maybe eliminate the loop, say my health, my mana and enemy health, enemy mana. Then I want to split the units into three groups, which will be, um, let's say spiders. I'll create a list, then uh, my heroes, create another list and then enemy heroes. Uh, I don't think we will use the enemy heroes positions and things like that in the first leagues because well in the first leagues we only have to play for ourselves and defend ourselves but maybe later we will want to like send spiders uh, towards the other base or things like that and so it will be helpful to know where there are holes in the defense of our enemies. Then I'll create a dictionary for the entities so entity will be dictionary and I'll give it just a revalue like this. Okay, so now the dictionary should be filled with all the data. Now we will want to uh, append it to the right list. So we have all those three lists and here given its type, uh, we can put it in the right list. So I'll just do a simple type, whether it's zero uh, will append it to spiders. If it's a one, 
I'll append it to our units. So my heroes. And if that's a two, we'll append it to the enemy heroes. To make sure we have no mistakes in that check and we are always in one of those three cases, we'll do an else statement and assert false, which will raise an exception here. Okay, so now we want to evaluate the threat level of the spiders. So here we want to do maybe a new list, which is a spider ranked spiders ranked and uh, for each spider in the spiders list we want to compute its threat level so here well we'll say zero just as a placeholder then we'll add to the spiders ranked we'll append the threat level and the spider after that we can uh, rank that so it's a tuple here so we have the two values that are placed as one here we want to sort by decreasing level of threat so here we can do spiders ranked and we can sort in reverse order and that way we have in the first three values the three spiders that will have the highest level of threat so the ones that are most likely to come in contact with our base so now let's actually compute the threat level so if it's near a base and it's threatening my base it means that it's really close to my base so i want to put it very high on the list so um if spider near base is one and it's threat for its mine so it's one as well then the threat level will be um let's put 1000 i don't know otherwise if it will eventually be a threat for my base we'll put the threat level to uh, maybe 500 and well otherwise we will keep the threat level at zero here i only have two different threat levels so maybe what i want to do is rank them as well according to their distance because one unit here that has 500 threat points that's uh, very close to the border of my 5000 units or one that's uh, the opposite side of the map maybe i want to treat the one that's closest first so what i want to do here is compute the distance between that spider and my base so here we can take the base x and base y which is our base's position and we we can also use the x and y coordinates of the spider to compute the distance it's based on the euclidean formula we can use uh, math.hypot which uh, computes the um, length of the hypotenuse of a right angle triangle given its uh, two other sides so here we can give it the difference in x coordinates and the difference of y coordinates and it will compute the square root of the squares summed together then what i want to do is say that lower distances will mean higher threat levels so maybe what i could do is take the inverse i'll just add one because just in case the distance is zero it could lead to some issues so here if i take the distance plus one it will never be zero and it won't change much to the computation since the distances will be in the orders of thousands and since this will give me a score that's between zero and one maybe what i want to do is multiply that by 500 so it can count as well for 500 points in total and so we can increase that so now that i have this what i want to do just for a try would be to send my first hero to the first spider my second hero to the second spider and the third hero to the third spider in uh, that list to see what happens and maybe even with that simple code we can pass the wood to boss one thing i'm fearing is that we will get far away from our base by trying to kill spiders that are further away and maybe that will cost us the victory in the end to move towards a uh, position we have to print move then the x value then the y value so that's we what we want to do here so we want to take the spiders ranked at position i take its x value oh wait we have to take at the index one because uh, remember in spiders ranked we have two values which is the threat level we don't really care about it but we have the spider in index one so we have this we have the y value as well and we have to print move here i can already see a problem with that code is when we don't have uh, three spiders visible so at the very beginning i don't think we will have too many spiders visible so we need to add a condition as well uh, which says uh, well if the length of that 
is of course greater than i then we can have a spider otherwise we'll have to wait so let's try that code uh, first in the debugging okay so my units are not moving yes and that's because i'm not using the right variable names so here i'm using near base in camel case but actually in my code earlier it's defined in snake case with the underscores so that's one easy bug to fix okay now we're playing 78 turns yes so my units are now moving as you can see they're getting pretty far away from the base oh we have one that's sneaking by let's hope i can catch it yes so as you can see the danger level went really high for all that unit so now uh, my heroes are focusing on those closer spiders and the enemy is getting a bit overwhelmed over there so yes they lost their three lives and so we win this game let's try just another time maybe not watch the entire game but make sure that we are winning again yes and uh, as we can see we are still at the end of the game uh, winning the enemy forgets to attend their own base and so they lose so we are beating the wood 2 boss so since we're doing that quite reliably let's send it to the arena so here that's when the battles count and that's where we are ranked so it will run many battles in a row well currently i'm the only one in the wood league because i'm working on the development environment in a coding game as you can see but the battles will take place so there will be a bit less than 100 battles to evaluate my code but so far i'm winning all of them so this is a very good sign. On the entire leaderboard, there is a score that's computed. I think it's based on the true skill algorithm on um, challenges on coding game. So if at the end of all my ranking battles, so here I'm done with 25% of them. If at the end of that I'm ranked higher than the boss, then it means that I will be promoted to the Wood 1 League. Okay, so now we are in the Wood 1 League. As you can see, there are now a few more rules that are being highlighted in green. The first difference is the Fog of War that's presented in uh, many video games as you can see uh, we we don't see the position of enemy heroes or uh, monsters unless they are um, close to our base or our heroes a new rule will be as well uh, spells so we have we will have a few spells at our disposal that's why we had the mana value and we have unlocked one uh, new spell which is the wind uh, it costs 10 mana points so to earn mana we need to deal points of damage to the spiders and so we will have to specify the direction towards which the wind is going the wind will push back by a lot the units so maybe we can direct them towards the enemy base i think maybe our code can still manage to beat the boss um, i'm not sure that will be uh, enough to beat it every time but uh the boss I think will now be using wind and things like that. I'm still on the top left here in the debug screen. Yes, you can see the, the enemy is still using wind to push the spiders towards my base now. But since my units are focusing on uh, my base, well, the enemy is still getting a bit overwhelmed. They have only one unit on the bottom right and they also have two units stacked together you there are actually two units at that position and so we you can still win with the exact same code which is a good thing i want to try again to see if that's a reliable victory i still managed to lose one health point so that's not good they are not defending their base uh, well enough so I can still manage to win with this simple strategy. I still <laughs> lost a health point at the very end. Let's launch it in the arena. Oh, as you can see now, I'm, I've uh, lost my first battle, but the remaining three are all right. So I can watch the battles in the arena as well. Yes, it's quite close. So you can see they are losing a point, then me, then we are both losing a point at the same turn. So we've just finished playing the 105 battles needed to compute our uh, score. Here, well, we managed to get way above the boss, so now we'll be promoted to bronze uh, in just a few seconds, as you can see here. So now if I try running my code in the bronze league, uh, oh, I can 
already see that <laughs> I'm losing that one. The enemy is way more aggressive. They still defend quite well. So now they have uh, two units in defense, I think, and uh, one in attack. And so that means they can push the spiders towards our base and, well, <laughs> make us lose way faster. So, well, that was me discovering the spring challenge of this year. I find the challenge very interesting. I'm looking forward to playing more of it. Today we've only done the first two leagues, but of course after bronze you have silver, gold, then legend league. The main challenge will be open from April 21st, 2022 until May 2nd. But of course you can still play it afterwards uh, as a practice session and well, I'll be playing it during the contest, so watch out for me in the leaderboard. You can add me as friend uh, on Coding Game as well if you want to track my progress. I hope you'll enjoy playing the challenge as much as I did. I'll leave a link to the Spring Challenge in the description. So good luck to everyone and I'll see you in the next video.